concept of God or a creator. It is unfortunate because in my perspective, and I've heard this from others, this was the creator's test. This has all been a test that the creator has given us, not to punish us, but it's been done to benefit us, to help our souls evolve. Because when we can identify great evil in the world that's trying to enslave humanity and, and stage in events that end, uh, end up resulting in the deaths of millions of people around the world and creating a police state domestically and setting the stage for the world war scenario, which is yet to come with China and Russia. When we're at that level of understanding, we can see how the path that we have taken has led us to the path that we're on now. And we're given enough information because so much of what's done is in plain sight. And so when it's in plain sight, when it's obviously done for dark purposes, when immoral things take place, like millions murdered in the Middle East, people that had nothing to do with 9-11, it's a test of morals. It's the creator looking at his children and go, I'm going to throw this in your lap. Okay, you dig? And I'm going to see how you're going to react to this. Are you going to question your own government calling you to join them in a genocide? Are you going to go along with that? Are you going to go along with that satanic agenda to take the lives of other people? Or are you going to see the light and the dark and choose which road that you are going to embark on? There are many of us that have heard from the mouths of many people. So what if 9-11 was an inside job? Yada, yada, yada. So what? And it can actually get worse when you're dealing with mind-controlled uh, members of certain black op teams that will say, yeah, we know 9-11 was an inside job, but it had to happen. We're for this. We're conquerors. We're rulers. We're masters. That's what we are. And we all know that many, many men, not all men, it is not good to judge all police the same way, but many men that become police feel inadequate and they want to rule over someone else. And they will do things that they know are immoral. Think about all the cops that set people up and arrest and attack peaceful protesters. Uh, look at the, the imagery again and think about the larger picture of, of the cop that sprays the woman at Occupy Wall Street or, or attacks the woman uh, down in Times Square. A very famous clip. It is the attack on the feminine and they're playing that dark masculine role. And what I'm going to elaborate more on is the dark masculine, the light masculine the dark feminine, and the light feminine. And we have four categories here that I'm going to go over in another video in more detail. But we have to understand that there are masculine and feminine energies in each and every one of us, whether you identify with being a man or you identify with being a woman based on whether you have a vagina or whether you have a penis. You have to exit that biological matrix because you're more than that. And what we have to do is exercise the divine masculine, the protective force that protects the tribe, that protects our children, that protects our family, that protects our land, that builds things for others, not destroys things. And then there's the divine feminine that cares about all the creatures on earth, men and women, that cares for all beings, wherever their ancestors are from on the globe, whatever their color, color is. That feminine, divine feminine energy in nature that has the ability to heal, to, to put the hands on someone and, and heal their body. As men, we have this divine feminine energy blueprint inside of us. We can tap into the goddess archetype. And we have to exit this fear of what other people are going to think about you. Because when you go down this path, 
the universe throws obstacles in your direction. And as you develop the ability to skip and jump and walk around those obstacles to see them, then you move up into higher levels. But ultimately, for myself, all this knowledge I've accrued from prior, prior lifetimes, all this knowledge I have accrued in this lifetime and that I will accrue before I depart this body and go back into spirit form, it's all being done so I can come back and be even more capable of disrupting the dark arconic grid. Now, it doesn't matter what you call them, greys, reptilians, the devil, Satan, El Diablo, the jinn, and people get caught up in names. People get caught up in terms. And I talked about that earlier, how, how there are certain things that are beyond words, and there are still many humans that have yet to come to terms with the reality of what's going down on earth, the temptation they're under. Because of their religious beliefs, or because someone in the church abused them, so they turned away from all spiritual teachings. There are many reasons why many human beings have a difficulty understanding the idea of evil in our world. And why, through such thinking, they end up at times serving evil because they deny its existence. We're not here to deny the truth. We're here to unravel and learn on an internal level deeper and deeper and deeper truths. And some truths are prerequisites, prerequisites to understanding other truths. There's a truth that you got to be able to hear and listen from others with respect as a prerequisite to understanding the words that are coming out of their mouth. You have to have an open mind as a prerequisite for the information in your cerebral cortex as it enters it, as you hear the information, for it to make sense. Karma exists on not only an individual level, but in terms of this country. And in so many ways, I can articulate the dark karma that this country has created for itself. Okay, But once you come to terms with that, and you come to terms with the fact that your own personal journey and your own karma may be different than the karma of the countries, you may find peace. There are reasons why certain things happen to certain people on this planet. There are no victims. Now, that doesn't mean that we're blaming the victim. That's not cool either. We should try to help people understand their circumstances. We should try to help people understand the nature of evil and how the universe throws us curveballs not to punish us, but to help us be what we are destined to be. And when we look at these alien forces and the, um, the attack on the human species, and we ask ourselves why, what we ought to be doing is spending more time looking in our own backyard at what we do to animals, how, they, how we treat them in the slaughterhouse, um, where their soul goes after they are murdered and we feast upon their flesh. We need to understand in this wheel of reincarnation, a very amazing, abstract, and mysterious one, truly why the things are the way that they are. And I'm more interested in spending my time providing you hope and giving you, sharing with you some of the wisdom that I've accrued and to do it to the best of my ability without ego and to bring people on my radio show on American Freedom Radio. The show is called Outs of the Box. You can also find the archives there at AmericanFreedomRadio.com. Guests that are focused on the expansion of consciousness and truly understanding why we are where we are. My journey didn't exactly start out that way, but I was always interested in the spiritual nature of things. And I was always intent on giving a spiritual perspective on why things are the way that they are. But there was a time for me to focus on 9-11. There was a time to focus on the police state and the surveillance society uh, that is in existence today. But years ago, people were in denial of it as it was being built all around us. 
But now there's a time to go deeper and understand why we're in the situation that we're in. And to understand that there are stories that lie in mythologies, right? History. Um, stories passed on from generation to generation. Legends of places like Atlantis, where societies similar to this, not exactly like this, but civilizations that seem to parallel the path that uh, ours is on, we can see evidence of this in the past. And we can see evidence of major cataclysms that have occurred on the earth. And there's a theme that I see running through this, this looping timeline for certain souls that are, are still in a process of learning about cause and effect, learning about karma, learning how to mindfully create instead of um, unmindfully destroying. And when I look beyond time, when I look beyond the present, beyond my idea of the past and beyond the future and see this, this looping timeline, I can see a pattern. I can see this Tower of Babel pattern where humanity reaches a peak and it is at a level where it's going to annihilate itself or has been in the past on the brink of annihilating itself and something major taking place on the earth. And this is where the sun gets very interesting. With the changes in the sun brings changes to the earth. And changes that will dramatically alter civilization as we know it. Not in the earth. And not exterminate the human species. But an event that turns this this reality upside down perhaps literally perhaps just metaphorically and I'm not going to say that because these changes are very very possible that we shouldn't do anything that it's all going to be cleaned up but when people start freaking out about the overpopulation uh, numbers 7 billion and growing 8 billion before we know it the earth has an innate ability to heal itself and to, uh, well, for those parts of humanity that are unfortunately behaving like a virus, the earth has a way of dealing with these things. And that's something completely different and far removed from anything the New World Order is plotting in terms of bioweapons and things of that nature. And this is not some some UN slanted Agenda 21, you know, Gaia Rage theology. But there is something about the Sophic myth and the spirit of the earth, which many identify to be Gaia. And fortunately, the powers that be have used the word Gaia to bring people into their fold and, and convince people that they are with the earth, when in reality, the powers that be are waging war on the feminine and masculine energies that are here on the earth. So, there is a larger plan <clears throat> as we wrap this up here. I'm about out of breath, guys. But I'm glad I sat down and did this. And uh, if you are able to contribute to the future construction of a studio out here in the desert so I can do these talks on video, it is very much appreciated. The Earth is about to go through something big. But so are our souls. So, the Earth has a date with a certain destiny where I see civilization being dramatically interrupted. But you got to pull back from what's going to happen with this earth and understand what's going on with you, where your soul is going, and understand the actions that you've taken before in prior lifetimes and within this lifetime got you to where you are at this particular moment in time. And you've got to free your mind and free yourself from mind as well to mindfully Create where you're going to go. You got to see beyond the death camps. You got to see beyond this fantasy that we're all going to collectively ascend together and get rescued by spaceships. You got to go beyond this heaven or hell perception. There is something greater waiting for us all. And despite the fact that my voice is going out, the spirit.